Richard, just to be sure, can we just start or will you give us a go? You can start. Yes, it's... Okay. <laughs> We're texting on the side like, is he going to give us a go or should we just yeah. <laughs> go? <laughs> no worries. Okay. Hi, everybody. So great that you're joining us during this uh, Family Strengthening Task Force. Very short session. Um, like I just explained, um, well, in the pitch, maybe first again, some introductions in case you just uh, joined late during the pitch. Uh, I'm Eva Schmalehanger. I'm from Warchild Holland. I'm currently the Global Psychosocial Support Specialist there, and I'm co-leading the Family Strengthening Task Force with Sarah Homo from Save the Children, uh, who, you, who has also switched on her video, so you can already see her, and you will hear from her in, uh, in a few minutes. Um, like I said during the very small pitch today, we will just um, um, talk you through what do we actually, first off, for at the beginning of 2020, what we were going to do and then what we've actually done and also how we foresee the end the rest of the year what we will be doing uh, and some of that work will be um, also be continuing in 2021 um so let us just get to it oh and then my slide doesn't go to the next oh, here we are so actually the priorities that we set for 2020 we're already this updating of the mapping that we've done with the Family Strengthening Task Force uh, in 2017, collecting all kinds of resources and interventions in one big document um, for actually um, the community to work with. Um, and well, three years have passed and we felt it was time for an update. So uh, both Save the Children as uh, War Child Holland were hoping to have interns uh, working together with us in doing the literature review and reaching out to different organizations, looking through all the kind of digital resources, uh, resource data banks, uh, and come with an update of this uh, mapping. Uh, unfortunately, also due to COVID, the intern program stopped and we had to uh, realign and um, find another way of getting uh, this mapping done. Um, and later on, Sarah will tell you a bit more on what we were actually um, able able to do and are still doing. And on October 15th, there will be a larger session on this particular uh, element of our work plan. And we hope that you will all join us there then as well to also support in, uh, in this nice workshop uh, in regards to mapping of um, the family strengthening uh, resources and tools overview. Uh, the other thing that was one of our priorities was, um, you know, supporting the community of practice, not only through these resources, but also through webinars and actually initi initiating or supporting um, an exchange, not only during the webinars, but also outside of the webinars on key topics related to, um, to the family strengthening uh, task force, such as uh, parenting uh, with parents, uh, we also had a webinar on the CPMS standard 16, um, and also uh, we spoke a bit about how uh, we have adapted all to the COVID-19 uh, situation when it comes to implementation of our programming. And Sarah will talk you through that a bit later. Um, another thing that was uh, high on the agenda, and the agenda, just to let you all know, was set with collaboration of our different members and really is based on requests that come from uh, our members and together we set the agenda, was on collecting case studies. Um, also the Child Protection Alliance has been working on a format for case studies and together we're hoping to really expand on these case studies and be readily available for everybody uh, to use and learn from. And another initiative, a priority that we had set was looking into different platforms of delivery um, and different ways and methods of delivery. Uh, well, I think the COVID-19 pandemic in that sense uh, pushed us also a bit towards this different kind of ways of delivery. Um, and at the same time, uh, some of our initial plans had to be altered due to COVID, but still I think everybody uh, at the moment is uh, quite um, working on this. So let me go to the next slide. So, Sarah, would you like to talk us through what we actually did achieve? Sure. Um, so, what did we do this year? Um, obviously, COVID uh, created quite a, a diversion from a lot of our original plans, but uh, we were able to um, 
eventually engage in a partnership with a Washington DC based university to bring on um, the, uh, the work of three graduate students in the School of International Service at American University in DC. And these three grad students are now working with us to update the, two, the 2017 um, family strengthening resource mapping. And this work just started uh, over the last month. So for the last month, Ava and I have been in consultations with the students, um, essentially reviewing existing resources, explaining the use of the, the mapping document um, and uh, the challenges of updating it. And we are now about to operationalize the next steps, um, which will kick off at our task force meeting next week. So next week, next Thursday, um, when the task force gathers for our annual meeting, our two hour meeting will be split into two, um, two sessions. The first hour will be our standard review uh, this year's work plan, um, note what was accomplished, what is still pending, design next year's work plan based on that. And then we will, we will then transition into a one hour focus group with the students from American University, where they will solicit our feedback on our ideas related to the mapping. So asking us for input on, um, on the content and the format, any special re requests we have um, for things we want to see there, um, us getting feedback so that we can help them decide what is there that no is no longer relevant or has an updated version new things new tools new resources that various members of the task force or beyond the task force have piloted and are now um are, are globally available um we will also ask for um guidance on on what the final product should look like so we're currently considering everything from just a standard excel format to a more complex annotated bibliography um, to a more interactive platform. So we'll also um, request feedback on that. So currently the timeline is um, we kick it off next, next week with a focus group. The focus group will then be followed up with a survey that all task force members will receive by email, um, soliciting further feedback and guidance on, on the revision of the mapping. And then, um, in follow-up to that, some one-on-one -on -one interviews will happen between the students and any members of the task force that want to be more involved and give more support and guidance. Um, we expect to have the final draft of the updated mapping completed in December. It will then be finalized in quarter one of 2021, and we will then organize a webinar to present it to the Alliance. So that, that's our, our, our first major piece of work, um, the resource mapping. For the case studies, um, as, as Ava said, um, we have, through our webinar series this year, we have um, had a lot of case studies presented um, verbally <laughs> and um, with very nice photos um, and, and slides <laughs> in the webinars, um, but we have struggled to document them in, in more detail. So we are working on a formatting um, and a call for the submission of case studies so that next year we can actually collate and, um, and format and disseminate case studies um, through, through the website, uh, through, through the Alliance website with all Alliance members, but also um, uh, across the task force members and, and the affiliated agencies. Next slide. Thanks, Ava. Um, okay, and then, then the last major thing that we did over the last year um, are the webinars. So last year we set out to do at least one webinar per quarter. We almost accomplished that. Um, we managed to do three and um, our hope is that next year we will be able to do more. Um, and not only that we'll be able to do at least one per quarter, but we'll be able to alternate time zones and languages. So this is a future goal for expanding the webinars so that we continue to build knowledge sharing across the global community of practice of the task force. So um, the three webinars that we did conduct, the first was um, in November last year, which was on care for the caregivers. 
And this was a webinar focused on MHPSS interventions for caregivers. It was moderated by World Vision, and we had three speakers from WHO, ACF, and War Child Holland. The second webinar was in April of this year, and that was the CPMS Standard 16 presentation. Um, Standard 16 of the CPMS is on family strengthening. So the co-leads of the, the task force gave an overview of the standard 16. And then we had a very nice example of how this standard is being used in action during COVID, which came from Tushinda, and they, where they presented their social worker model that they're currently using um, during COVID lockdown in Kenya. Then the third webinar took place in June of this year, and that webinar was on adapting family strengthening approaches during COVID-19. We heard examples from War Child Holland, Tushinda, and Save the Children. Um, and then we had a very uh, nice interactive discussion and Q&A um, where many of our colleagues shared uh, both challenges and successes in program adap adaptation during COVID. Um, we are currently working on our next round of scheduling for new webinars. Um, hopefully we will be doing one in quarter four this year, and then um, at least one or two in quarter one of next year, including a webinar to present the updated mapping of the Family Strengthening um, Resource Guide. Uh, next slide. Um, Ava, would you like to, shall I kick it back to you? Trying to find my unmute button. Sorry. <laughs> yes, that's fine, Sarah. Um, so that's what we were hoping so far to do and what we were able to uh, achieve. And then for 2021, um, what our priorities will be will actually also, as Sarah said, will be uh, discussed in the first hour of our uh, annual meeting on October 15th. Uh, but of course, as colleagues, we have already been a bit brainstorming on what we would like to have on the 2021 and beyond agenda. Uh, so as uh, Sarah said, the webinars should uh, continue um, as well eliminate updated family strengthening resource mapping. So um, during the 15th session, uh, so 15th session, we will tap into your brains and suggestions when it comes to, okay, what should this um, resource actually look like? How is it user friendly? Uh, and interesting and appealing enough to also actually use. Uh, but then we need to see how can we further make sure that it's really disseminated um, uh, and used use in practice. So that's another thing that's on the 2021 agenda. So do a bit more with the mapping um, and advocating for the mapping and its use and maybe has happened with the previous version. We continue with the case studies. Um, uh, collection and also maybe work on some guidance notes that come with, the, with these case studies um, and try to look at those new delivery platforms. Um, that was something that we also wanted to do for 2020. Unfortunately, we were uh, working on uh, possible grants to get some funding to test these new delivery platforms, but unfortunately we didn't, um, we were not successful in getting the funds. So we need to see what can we do and then also with the different task force members who is also willing maybe a separate committee or so to also work on um, writing proposals and going for the funding or find alternative ways of testing these new delivery platforms. Um, and then one of the bigger things that were still on the, on the agenda also already for 2020 was integrating the family strengthening learning into interagency training materials. And this is something that we will really need to do uh, collectively with the different task force members and the different organizations that we're, uh, we're working with. So that's what we have for now on the 2021 agenda, but of course, as said in the beginning and also in the, in the pitch, it's really also our members um, that have a big say in what will actually be on, in our annual plan. Um, and also it could well be that there will be additional topics that are not mentioned here um, that will be added to this, to this list. For example, to give one uh, an additional idea is maybe also to look more broadly into trends when it comes to ways of delivery uh, of family strengthening activities and approaches in the light of COVID. So what and additional topics that are related to long-term impact of COVID-19 
Um, for example, what Chad Hunt has done a small exploratory um, study um, within our own um, organization to see what kind of trends are popping up, what are people in the field actually working day, every day with families and children and what are they expecting will be the longer impact that needs to be tackled also on a broader scale. And one of these things, for example, is stress management uh, for both children, but also for youth and for parents, um, as well as, for example, dealing with anxiety. And both these topics are also related and very applicable for implementers and people working uh, with, uh, with families uh, in these times of COVID. So it could also well be that you would like to add um, uh, several uh, bits and pieces when it comes to trends uh, and long-term impact of COVID-19, but it's something to be discussed during our annual meetings. So Sarah, would you like to add? Um, correct me if I'm wrong, that is our last slide, right, Eva? Yeah. <laughs> There was one, one other one that was the what's next 2021, 2023, but you can consider this one last. Okay. Um, so given, uh, given the, the segue into what's next, um, obviously we, we have a new planning period. Um, there's a lot that's happening right now that is carrying over into 2021 and will definitely be part of our work plan next year. Um, but there, there is definitely room for new things um, and new priorities, uh, especially if funding is available. Um, so uh, with that said, why don't we pause and open it up for questions or comments or any reflections from anyone who is here with us right now. Um, whether you are part of the task force or you're interested in joining the task force um, or if uh, you don't necessarily have time but would still like to benefit from what we're doing, um, please feel free to make suggestions or ask questions. Um, we have at least another 10 minutes for conversation. I've quickly looked at the chat and I don't see any questions there. So if anyone else would just like to share their questions now, that's fine. Deafening silence. I think we should take that as a compliment, Sarah, that we've explained it very well. <laughs> Maybe. Hi. Oh, go ahead. Yes, I don't. I can't see who's speaking. Yeah, you can't see me because my video is oh, yeah. not on. Kind of lag. And I, I now I see the yellow square. Tul Tulafi, is that correct? That's right. Hi, hi. Uh, I've got a quick question. Um, so, with all your webinars that you've done, uh, and also uh, what you've done thus far with the research, uh, what kind of family interventions have you mapped so far? Oh, or would I only get this information next year? So the mapping, um, the mapping is a, a specific um, resource that we currently have. It is an Excel spreadsheet, um, which is essentially a list of global resources, um, everything from training protocols to technical programming implementation guides to um, monitoring and evaluation tools or resources, all related to family strengthening. A lot of it focused on parent and caregiver support. And all th this actual mapping was done in 2017. So what we're currently doing is we're updating it. So we're going through it, we're seeing which of these tools are still relevant are, and are the most updated tool resource from whichever organization produced it. Um, we're looking for more recent, more updated versions if they exist of that ex specific tool. We're also looking for um, what new things have been developed in the last three years that, were not, that obviously were not included because they weren't around at the time. Um, and what we're going to do, because a lot of the focus around the task force and around the concept of family strengthening, at least within the Alliance, has grown to be a lot more multi-sectoral over the last few years. We're also looking more broadly. So not only are we looking at you know, child protection in humanitarian contexts, we're also looking at the development nexus. So 
how we move in child protection programming for family strengthening between development and humanitarian and back and forth and, and that kind of middle ground. We're also looking at um, a multi-sectoral lens. So looking at family strengthening strategies that not only come from child protection, but are things that would be um, would have linkages with child protection if they come from health or nutrition or education or youth and livelihoods programming or any type of multi-sectoral approach um, that might not be CP specific. Um, so we're essentially just expanding um, the horizon, uh, updating the materials, getting new things into it, um, and developing it uh, into a slightly uh, into a slightly different format, um, which is yet to be determined. We're waiting for feedback next week during the focus group about exactly what will work best for the task force members and members of the Alliance more generally. This mapping document will be shared next year. We currently hope to have the final draft in December and then the task from, from the graduate students that are developing it on our behalf and the task force will then finalize it in quarter one of next year. Once it's finalized, we will organize a webinar and we will present it on the webinar and we will then make it available on the Alliance webpage where you can download it for your own use. Did that answer your question? Um, it did, but I think I will probably find more information in the resource uh, package, I think once it, it's developed because I'm really specifically looking at uh, uh, some of the, I suppose, family strengthening tools uh, and how can I contextualize it here in this context. So um, I suppose I'll wait for the updated resource package. Thank you, thanks, Sarah. Sure. The current mapping, the 2017 mapping, is currently available. It is on the Alliance website. So you can download that version right now. And I'm sure that that's a very good version. Um, it, it has a lot of really useful tools, a lot of it focused on the well-being of parents and caregivers. Um, but this kind of expanded and updated version will be available next year. And it will also be available for download from the Alliance website. OK, great. Thank you. You're welcome. Sorry, we, we, we was have, oh, sorry. Hi, are you hearing me? Yes, hello. Hello, hi, I'm so, uh, we was have a program. Uh, there are um, positive discipline in everyday parenting. And also we have a parenting skill. We can update this program to, to be like, a benefit during the COVID-19 also for and also for the next year for the, for the online uh, uh, session and use it. Only we need an update and implement, implement it online or during uh, the radio. We can. Resource, I think. We lost you. I, I didn't catch the last bit of your question. My connection. My question. My question is: We can update this program, positive di discipline in everyday parenting, also parenting skills, to be used online for the parents, and they can use it for the parenting strengthening or family strengthening. Thank you. Are you are, are you telling us that you're already using it online, or are you suggesting it to be adapted for online use? No. Before, no, we are using face-to-face -face this program. But uh, no, we didn't use after COVID-19 and this pandemic. But my recommendation, we can use after updating. Mm -hmm. So you're suggesting that an update that would allow it yes. to be used online yeah. take place in as soon as possible. Yes. Okay, yes. thank you very much. Yeah, that would be great. And please let us also know when you've updated it so we can also incorporate it in our uh, overview for the resources.
Let me also, I see some questions popping up in the chat. I think we can do at least one. Sarah, I will read them and then you can try to answer them. Uh, this is from Sarah Hildrew. When the last mapping was done, it had a bit narrower focus on interventions which support caregiver well-being. So will part of the push be to cover a wider range of interventions which support, which support family strengthening more broadly? Um, most probably. Um, the conversations within the task force meet annual meeting last year indicated um, a desire for it to be broader. Um, broader within the concept of family strengthening, broader within the humanitarian development nexus, and broader um, within a, a, a slightly more multi-sectoral lens. Um, this will be part of the feedback that we request from the task force group next week during the focus group. Um, the focus group is really going to be the first time that the three students that are actually writing the update are going to hear from the whole focus group at one or from the whole task force at once to get everyone's feedback on what they would like to see there, how they would like um, it to be presented, um, whether they prefer uh, you know, uh, more of a focus in one specific sector or through one specific technical or programmatic lens or whether they would like this broader view. So that, so far the conversation has led us toward the assumption that it is going to be much broader um, but this will be confirmed next week at the task force meeting. Does that answer your question, Sarah? It does, thank you. <laughs> Great to hear that this work is going forward. Thanks. Um, I also see one other question from Alison. How is the task force understanding the needs of local actors? I'm just wondering how it's done across task forces in the view of localization. Alison, can you, are you still here? And can you maybe explain your question or add your, to your question? Yeah, um, we were just in the localization discussion prior to this, and uh, one of the things we were asked, one of the things we were talking about is how is localization built in around the task forces, and I just wonder there was a push in the discussion around really identifying um, what the needs of local actors are from the bottom up, and I wondered obviously there's a lot of development going on within this task force how that sits within kind of like this discussion of localization and and being you know bottom up just out of interest <laughs> i'm happy to answer unless you would like to ava um so go ahead sir. oh i i think that there are several entry points to the localization conversation the first is that within the task group um, we have a quite um, global representation within the task group that within the task force group of both international NGOs and local NGOs um, within the international NGOs. It's a um, it's a lot of um, country offices. Um, so we have, uh, I would say, at least in and I, I mean, I, I didn't uh, actually run the statistics on this, but um, I can say from being in the annual meeting last year and um, our task force meetings this year, um, we have significant uh, representation from, um, from local INGO partners as well as independent local NGOs um, who are feeding into this. Um, and from the, the second, um, the mapping itself is looking sort of the parameters of, of the mapping process are looking for any any type of approach or tool or resource that is used in more than one country so um, specifically looking at regional partnerships and tools that are adapted to to regional settings or regional contexts um, that hopefully will be um, or, or the local adaptations of global tools or global approaches or global methods. Um, so I, I think it's an ongoing conversation and it's something that we're, we're trying to uh, do better and make sure that everything that we are including is relevant to, to the local context. Um, but it's, um, it, it's hopefully something that is 
is so far and will continue to play out well within the group um, in meeting the needs of, of our local partners who uh, are significantly represented in the process. Great, thank you. And I'm just you. looking at the time, it's five o'clock, so I'd just like to maybe uh, close the session off with one last question from Iman, who is asking, how can this map help us during our job, uh, doing our job during COVID-19, and how will it make our job more easily? And I think one of the things that we hope during uh, the session on October 15th is also to figure out together with the group how this mapping can be of most use for everyone that's, you know, actually in need of this information. So how can we make it user friendly? How can we categorize it in such a way that you can easily find the information that you need to make a decision on maybe appropriate interventions or activities within your specific context? So I think this question will also pop up very extensively during our October 15th meeting. So uh, maybe Sarah, unless something uh, you want to add something else, I would like to invite you all to join that session on October 15th to discuss further.